Now the number one story of the week, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Dennis McDonough, says the agency will revamp its electronic health records project. Carol Harris of the Government Accountability Office told Government Matters this week one of the biggest issues the agency has is who talks to who and how about its technology issues. Gordon Bitko, Senior Vice President of Policy at the Information Technology Industry Council. He's former Chief Information Officer at the FBI. David Pounder is Executive Director of the Center for Data-Driven Policy and Director of Strategic Engagement and Partnerships at MITRE. He's former Director of IT Issues at the Government Accountability Office. Gentlemen, welcome. Dave, I start with you. I imagine it's frustrating to see uh, one of your former colleagues out here talking about the same things that you and I have been talking about seriously since long before Fatara even became law. What's your take on where that communication is today between CIOs and the other uh, C-suite leaders and other leaders at the tops of federal agencies, Dave? Yeah, well, Francis, uh, you know, and I think Carol's points are spot on. I think we need to continue to make progress on the authorities of federal CIOs. Uh, I think it's a mixed bag. You know, we still have some CIOs that need to be viewed as strategic business partners and really part of that executive management team. And if you look right now with what's facing uh, federal CIOs and some of the challenges, you know, the cyber EO and working with CISOs, the big legacy challenges we have, now's the opportunity to really step up and help deliver on mission outcomes in securing those agencies appropriately and really be viewed as a strategic business partner and continue to elevate uh, the authorities of CIOs and make them make ensure that they really have a seat at that executive table. Uh, Gordon, welcome. It's good to have you on the program. And apologies that the number one story of the week is not Pete Alonzo and his dominance of the home run derby this year. Um, what is the key for a chief information officer? What is his or her role in making him or herself valuable, demonstrating value to the other C-suite leaders as that strategic business partner that Dave's referring to? Francis, thanks for having me back on. And I wish we could spend the time talking about Pete and the Mets run to the pennant here at the end of the season. But to get to your more specific and relevant question, I think CIOs have to be embedded in the mission. What Dave said is, is spot on at the executive level, but that has to cascade down throughout the organization. There have to be integrated teams that consist of the CIO, representatives from the CIO's office, acquisition officers, security officers, and the business mission from day one, from the time that a project's being developed. That way the CIO can bring expertise to say, hey, there's a best in class commercial product already available that does what you're looking to do. We don't need to develop that. What we need to focus on is what your unique requirements are. How do we build those? How do we do those in a secure and effective and reliable way that ensures we get what you need rather than waiting until the delivery of the project and then the project manager is first talking to the CIO. That's when we encounter real problems. So the key then, Gordon, is interaction and collaboration, not just at the C-suite level, but all the way down throughout the, the organization with acquisition, financial management, IT, and personnel, right, Gordon? A absolutely, continuously throughout the life cycle of the project, that's got to be the culture of the IT and business to work together in the organization. It starts at the top, but it's got to, like you said, Francis, go throughout the organization. Dave, I saw you were nodding your head as Gordon was talking about that. What organization, where organizations have been successful doing that? What have been the techniques that they used in order to achieve that success, Dave? Well, you know, I, I do think they do align with the business partners, but something that Gordon said, I think, sh struck home, where you, got, you, you need to have that alignment down, but this alignment of the chiefs is very important. You know, right now, you know, we, we've always talked, Francis, about the CFO and the relationship with the CIO and the CFO, but the chief acquisition officer, the chief procurement officer, and now with the Evidence Act and we have CDOs and, you know, we're hearing about these strategic plans and the like, we need to really make sure that the chiefs are really aligned. They all play a critical role on delivering on mission outcomes. And I think being viewed as like a synergistic executive team of the chiefs is really, really important. And we don't consistently have that. There are pockets where that does occur. And I think where it does occur, we're delivering better on those mission outcomes. Gordon, I want to combine your policy position and expertise today with your CIO expertise uh, from your past life. Is there some legislative remedy that would drive that uh, a tighter level of collaboration than we're seeing today? Or is it just incumbent on the leadership in these organizations to say this is how we're going to do it moving forward? 
Uh, honestly, Francis, I, I, that's a great question. I, but my opinion is that it's a cultural thing in the organization. It's incumbent on the leaders. It's incumbent on the administration and Congress as they put senior leaders in place to ensure that they understand the importance of technology to the mission of every government agency now, and that they do think of their CIO, their chief acquisition officer, their chief data officer, their CISO, all the positions that Dave just mentioned, that those are all part of their senior leadership team. It's not the business team, the mission team, and the technology team as somebody separate, but that they are, are all a part. And that, that is a cultural thing. It's challenging just because of the difficulty in getting appointed positions confirmed, how long it takes sometimes, and the rate of turnover to really establish that culturally, but that's got to be a priority for agency leadership. Gordon Bitko, David Pounder, thanks very much for joining me today. I appreciate your time, both of you. Thank you. Thank you.